Welcome, I am Eric, your local third period mathematician and calculus genius, here today to give you a lesson on integration through substitution, or as you may know it, U substitution. Today we're going to be doing two example problems, one being an indefinite integral and one being a definite integral. We will now begin with our first example problem, our indefinite integral. We have the integral of x squared plus 5 times 2x dx. Now you might be thinking, what is our first step in this problem? Where do you begin? Don't fear. Our first step is quite simple. We just need to find our u value. And in this case, we're going to make our u value x squared plus 5. Uh-oh, we're in terms of u, which means that we are not taking the derivative with respect to x, and instead we are taking the derivative with respect to u, meaning we have to find du. And du in this case is equal to 2x dx. We have a 2x dx here and a 2x dx up top, meaning we can sufficiently substitute du for dx. We will now rewrite our integral. We have the integral of u du. After integrating, we get u squared over 2 plus c. Now you might be thinking, what is that plus c? Is that even important? Where did that come from? And you always have to remember, taking an integral of an indefinite integral means there is an always an applicable constant. So you always add plus c to your final answer. Moving on to the other half of the board, we will begin our definite integral problem. We have the integral from 1 to 3 of x squared plus 5 times x dx. Now as stated in the indefinite integral problem, our first step in this case is to find our u value. And again, we're going to make u equal x squared plus 5. And again, since we are now taking the derivative with respect to u and not x, we must substitute du for dx. du is equal to 2x dx. 2x dx up here. Uh-oh! x dx up there. That means we cannot properly substitute du for dx, meaning we have to divide both sides by 2 to make our du value equal to x dx. However, that does mean it will be 1 half du is equal to x dx. We can now properly substitute du for dx. Pulling the 1 half in front, we have 1 half times the integral. Stop! You might be thinking, 1 to 3 is our limits of integration. However, we can put them in terms of u to make our math more simple. All we do is take our limits of integration and plug them into our u value to get our new limits of integration. We'll come over here, and in this case we have 1 squared plus 5 to give us 6, and 3 squared plus 5 to give us 14. So we now have 1 half times the integral from 6 to 14 of u d u. We have u squared over 2 times 1 half evaluated from 6 to 14. That reduces to u squared over 4 evaluated from 6 to 14, meaning we have 14 squared over 4 minus 6 squared over 4. 196 over 4 minus 36 over 4 gives us 49 minus 9, giving our final answer of 40. Quick little recap, for indefinite integral problems, find u, you're taking the derivative with respect to u, so you have to substitute du for dx, make sure you can sufficiently substitute du for dx by looking what is in front of dx. And also, with indefinite integral problems, there is always an applicable constant, meaning you must always add plus c. A quick recap on definite integral problems. Find u, again, taking the derivative with respect to u, so you substitute for u. 
in this case, 2x dx did not match, so we had to properly suffice du by giving 1 half du and substituting that in for x dx. You can also take your limits of integration, put them in terms of u, so you don't have to take your initial function that you had, x squared plus 5, and plug it back in once you integrate. That will give you your final answer in terms of Again, I'm Eric, your local third period mathematician and calculus genius. And I hope you learned something on integration through substitution. Thank you for joining me today.